The IRODS Data Grid is a policy-based data management system for organizing distributed data into a shareable collection. Data grids provide the basis for virtualization of the properties of collections, for managing interactions with technology, and for managing interactions with users. Data grid software is called middleware because it manages interactions between clients and the storage systems where the data reside. At each location where data are stored, the data grid middleware is installed under an account that represents the data grid. Note that a user of the data grid does not have a personal account at that storage location. The data grid acts as a proxy for the user doing operations on behalf of the user. The middleware installed at each location includes a local rule base and a rule engine that enforces management policies. Note that different policies can be applied at each storage location. In practice, data grid administrators implement a uniform set of policies that are distributed to each of the storage locations. The policies manage the properties of the collection, interactions with the storage system protocols, and apply operations on behalf of the user. Policy-based systems extract policies as first-class objects, treating the naming, management, and description of the policies the same way that the naming, management, and description is done for files. It is possible to name policies, share policies, and execute policies. The SILS Lifetime Library uses policy-based data management to control student collections. A figure illustrating the role of data grid middleware is shown here. Instead of directly accessing files at a storage location, the client accesses the data grid. The data grid translates the requests made by the client to the protocol required by the storage system. This enables any client that is able to connect to the data grid to discover and retrieve files from any file systems, archives, object stores, websites, and legacy repositories that have unique access protocols. Since the client does not directly interact with the storage system, the data grid can create global namespaces for the users, the files, the collections, the metadata, and the policies independently of the choice of the storage systems. The layers of the data grid system are shown here. It is noteworthy to emphasize that in addition to collection properties, operations upon the collections have also been virtualized. The actions that are requested by a client are translated into standard operations and microservices that are supported by the data grid. These standard operations are mapped to the protocol that the storage systems require. An implication is that the same standard operations run on all storage systems. Policies that are implemented in the data grid can be executed on any linked storage system. The policies do not have to change when new types of storage systems or new authentication environments or new transport mechanisms are interfaced to the data grid. The data grid manages persistent collections. As the underlying technology changes, the properties of the collection do not change. The controlling collection management policies do not change and the policies controlling user interactions do not change. The IRUD's data grid architecture is shown here. The data grid implements peer-to-peer -peer servers that can exchange operations. A new storage server can be added to the data grid without any modifications to the existing storage servers. Information about the new server is entered into the metadata catalog. The new server can be added to a group of storage resources. The system will automatically store data in the new server. A standard concern is that the data grid relies upon a central metadata catalog. If the metadata catalog is lost, the system loses all of its state information and the file locations are lost. To ameliorate this concern, the data grid interacts with databases through a catalog interface. The operations that are needed in the database are turned into queries within the catalog interface, decoupling metadata interactions from the choice of database technology. The data grid can interact with a distributed database such as Oracle, or a streaming replication database such as Postgres, or a master-slave database system, or a pool of databases such as a Postgres pool. The steps that are performed when a user accesses the data grid rely upon the virtualization mechanisms for each operation. The user connects to any of the data grid servers, the server interacts with the metadata catalog server to authenticate the identity of the user. The action requested by the user is authorized. The location of the requested file is found from the metadata catalog. 
The data grid authenticates itself to the remote storage location. The data grid retrieves the file and updates the state information. An implication is that the data grid owns the data that are being managed. Users authenticate themselves to the data grid. The data grid authenticates itself to the storage location and does the requested operation if the user is authorized. The data grid has to keep track of the identity of all users and of the access permissions on every file. Take seven minutes and complete exercise number 12. Write a paragraph on the components of a data grid. Which components are needed to interact with users? Which components are needed to interact with hardware and software technologies? Please load your paragraph into the Lifetime Library in the subcollection class INLS 624 by the end of today's class. Data Grid Applications Use Case Data Grid technology has been used to support all types of data management applications at scales running from institutional repositories to national digital libraries to international collaboration. Data management infrastructure needs to be scalable from use on a researcher laptop with 10,000 files to use on an institutional server with over 100 million files. The scalability also needs to include support for highly distributed environments with the shared collection distributed nationally and even internationally. Policy-based data management systems also need to be highly extensible with the ability to support a wide variety of applications by changing the policies and procedures enforced within the distributed environment. Each data grid application defines the policies needed to manage their user community and ensure that required properties for their data collections are enforced. Examples of groups applying policy-based data management systems are shown here. The table is organized with the disciplines listed on the left, projects using the IROD's data grid software listed in the middle, and the driving purpose for the collection listed on the right. The projects range from simple project collections to institutional repositories, to national data grids, to national digital libraries, to national archives, to international collaborations. The types of data management applications include project collections, shared collections, digital libraries, archives, and processing pipelines. There are several notable projects in the list. The Babar High Energy Physics Experiment moved more than two petabytes of data between the Stanford Linear Accelerator in Palo Alto, California, to the French National Institute for Nuclear Physics and Particle Physics in Lyon, France. The data were replicated at the rate of two terabytes per day. Occasionally, the data flowed back from Lyon to Slack. The Tokai Tukamioka T2K neutrino experiment managed the aggregation of small experimental data sets into containers that were archived on tape at Keck in Japan. This ensured the preservation of the data while optimizing use of tape archives. The experiment received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2015. The Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute used data grids to manage genomics data from multiple projects. Sanger demonstrated organization of 25 petabytes of data while managing access controls and patient privacy. The NOAA National Climatic Data Center used data grids to manage the ingestion of climate records into their archive. The policy-based system enabled the archive to pull data from a staging area eliminating security concerns with data being pushed into the archive by external processes. In practice, groups that choose to apply data grid technology are driven by four major motivations. Build a shared namespace for files across multiple institutions to support collaborations, or build a policy-based system that automates enforcement of management policies in a distributed environment, or manage a collection distributed across heterogeneous storage systems and the associated technology evolution, or federate multiple existing technologies, enabling legacy systems to participate in a shared collection. In all four cases, interoperability is needed, either across administrative domains or across institutions or across technologies. A data grid virtualizes the properties of the distributed collection making it possible to manage the collection properties independently of the local policies and technology. The IROD's data grid software used in the Lifetime Library is open source. The software is maintained by the IROD's consortium, a membership-based enterprise. The participating companies and projects seek the opportunity to influence the long-term sustainability of the software 
add features relevant to their application domain, and build upon collective software development efforts. The IROD's consortium maintains a GitHub repository for the software. Information about the consortium is available at irods.org. The DFC Federation Hub also has long-term support from consortia. The National Consortium for Data Science at rinci.org slash research slash ncds and the National Science Foundation Big Data Hub Southern Regional Project. All three consortia seek participation by academic institutions, vendors, and federal agencies. A major motivation for vendors is the transition of storage vendors from a focus on providing bit management to providing collection management. The ability to manage properties about collections is increasingly important as collection sizes scale into the hundreds of millions of files. The networking community is also going through a transition from a focus on providing message delivery to a focus on supporting data flows and providing data services within the network. The NSF Syndicate project seeks to provide block-based caching services within the Internet 2 architecture, as well as services for addressing data sets by collection file name, services for building virtual private networks to improve security, and services to optimize data flows by linking multiple data sources to the destination. The data management capabilities provided by data grids are migrating down into the storage system and up into the network. The expectation is that data management capabilities will become a ubiquitous component of the national cyber infrastructure. The differentiating aspect will be the set of policies and procedures that are applied by each institution. A project will be able to form a collaboration with any person in the world through the establishment of a consensus on the policies that govern their interaction. New storage systems will come grid enabled, making it possible to add the new systems to any existing data grid. These capabilities will lead to improved collaboration capabilities, improved information dissemination capabilities, and improved abilities to support reproducible research.